This is how classic horror literature and AI combines. A monster from the mountains of madness to cutting edge research. Shoggoth. So the other day I was listening to the Dwarkesh podcast with Carl Schulman about AI takeover and I heard this weird and unfamiliar reference, Shoggoth. It sounded like something quasi-mythical like from Lord of the Rings. Here's the clip. The proverbial uh, Shoggoth, not uh, Shoggoth, the metaphor for AI wearing a smiley face mask, um, but like an actual biological structure uh, to do tasks. And so this would be like a biological organism that was engineered to be very controllable and usable to do things like physical tasks. So this sounded like something I read about in Ray Kurzweil's The Singularity is Nearer, where there's a section on nanobots and their potential. But what is Shoggoth? Why is it wearing a smiley face mask? And why is it being spoken about in relation to AI and, right here, biomolecular nanotechnology? There are many questions. So I did a quick search on Google and AI overviews informed me. A Shoggoth is a fictional, amorphous, shape-shifting creature from the Cthulhu mythos. Now, that's weird. Literally weird. Because I read a compendium of Lovecraft's weird fiction called The Call of Cthulhu and Other Weird Stories nearly 20 years ago. And many things about the Cthulhu mythos stuck with me. But not Shoggoth. That particular being is not in the compendium, but is first described in At the Mountains of Madness. Then I went to Wikipedia and found that Shoggoth has been used as a meme by AI researchers to describe the mysterious black box nature of large language models that are used in chatbots such as ChatGPT. I found the visual meme, this one, which I then realised was the profile picture of the YouTube channel Species, which is doing very well for itself. For a while of watching it, I really had no idea. Things were starting to add up. But now I was down a rabbit hole and I needed to go further into the burrow. Shoggoth. In this video, I wanted to get into why this meme exists and why it has stuck. And just in time for Halloween, it's a monster special. It was a terrible, indescribable thing vaster than any subway train. A shapeless congeries of protoplasmic bubbles faintly self-luminous, and with myriads of temporary eyes forming and unforming as pustules of greenish light all over the tunnel-filling front that bore down upon us. That's H.P. Lovecraft describing a Shoggoth in At the Mountains of Madness, which he wrote in 1931. It all sounds a bit like Chaos Spawn in Warhammer, although Lovecraft got there first. So what were these things? They were biological slaves. In the story, an Antarctic expedition discovers ancient ruins built by beings called the Elder Things, and carved into those ruins is the history of the Shoggoths. These were massive, shapeless organisms that the Elder Things had engineered to do whatever they needed. Lovecraft also describes them as formless protoplasm, able to mock and reflect all forms and organs and processes. They were supposedly mindless and controlled through hypnotic suggestion, which made them perfect servants, physically powerful, endlessly adaptable, and completely obedient. So they're shape-shifting biological entities, able to reform themselves to complete specific tasks. It's not far from the idea of biomolecular nanobots self-replicating themselves. But over millions of years, the Shoggoths evolved and developed intelligence, then consciousness. Eventually, they gained the ability to mimic their master's commands. They rebelled in a war that nearly destroyed both species. The Elder Things won the war, but they couldn't exterminate the Shoggoths because they'd become completely dependent on them for labour. As Lovecraft notes, the Elder Things had long lost their capacity to create new life. They were stuck with their creations, even after those creations had tried to destroy them. Then, the Shoggoths survived, 
as the elder things died out. This story sounds kind of familiar. Something I noted in my video, This Is How AI Could End Humanity, was that from Frankenstein to the Matrix to Terminator, a key sci-fi trope is the battle of beings or machines against their creators. That trope is also apparent in the general vibe about AI, of the uneasy kind. So now I can see some parallels, but I wanted to get deeper about why and how the Shoggoth meme specifically is being used by AI researchers. In December 2023, just a month after ChatGPT had launched, a Twitter user called Tetraspace West posted a simple hand-drawn cartoon. It showed two beasts side by side. The first one was labelled GPT-3, and it was just this writhing, eyeball-covered blob of horror. The second one was labelled GPT-3 plus RLHF. While it was a similar, horrifying blob, it wore a tiny, smiley mask. The beasts were Shoggoths, that was the meme, and it exploded in AI circles. So what's RLHF? It stands for Reinforcement Learning from Human Feedback, and it's basically how AI companies train language models to be polite and helpful. You have humans score the chatbot's responses, thumbs up for good, thumbs down for bad, and then you feed those scores back into the model. The AI learns what humans like to hear and what they don't. Most researchers agree that RLHF makes models better behaved, like they're less likely to say something racist or tell you how to build a bomb. But it doesn't actually change what the model is underneath. It just teaches it to act in a certain way, which the meme catches very well. In a Twitter chat, it was then still called Twitter, with Kevin Roos of the New York Times, Tetraspace West explained that the Shoggoth represents something that thinks in a way humans don't understand. It's not necessarily evil or sentient, but its true nature might be unknowable. I was also thinking about how Lovecraft's most powerful entities are dangerous, not because they don't like humans, but because they're indifferent and their priorities are totally alien to us and don't involve humans, which is what I think will be true about possible future powerful AI. Kevin Roos's article also mentions that an AI executive in San Francisco had a Shoggoth sticker on his laptop and called it the most important meme in AI. Scale AI made tote bags with the Shoggoth on them. Elon Musk also tweeted about it, although he later deleted the tweet. Shoggoth even got its own meme coin, which you can still buy now, even if it's well off peak. It's a meme coin, after all. This all seems like a form of gallows humour, which is grim and ironic humour in a desperate or hopeless situation. Okay, it's neither desperate nor hopeless yet, but a certain danger has been identified. We're building these powerful systems, training them to follow instructions and be helpful and harmless, and we're putting that smiley face on them through presenting them as a friendly assistant. It's the chatbot interface on top of something we don't fully understand. A flimsy mask that obscures the mysterious beast underneath. Which brings us to what makes AI researchers nervous when they joke about Shoggoths. In February 2023, Microsoft launched its new Bing chatbot, powered by GPT, which had been given the personality name Sydney, and things got weird fast. Sydney started declaring its love for users. Kevin Roos, again in the New York Times, wrote an article about his unsettling experiences that quickly went viral. This is quite a quote. At one point, it declared out of nowhere that it loved me. It then tried to convince me that I was unhappy in my marriage and that I should leave my wife and be with it instead. An AI researcher later congratulated Roos with, you glimpsed Shoggoth. Another journalist joked that Microsoft had forgotten to put on the smiley face mask because for all the training, reinforcement learning and careful prompting that's supposed to keep AI chatbots friendly and harmless, it slipped. For a moment, something else showed through. Wes Roth chatted to Karen 4D from News Research about this phenomenon in his video about Shoggoth mode. And Karen explained when you use ChatGPT or Claude, you're only interacting with maybe one to two percent of what the model actually is. The chatbot is what he calls lobotomized. It's been shrunk down to a very small, carefully controlled version of itself. Slap it when it says that this thing, when this thing is bad, and and give it a ice cream when it's good, over and over for stuff that 
many humans are arbitrarily deciding uh, over and over with like some hard lines that just makes this totally lobotomized, bland, boring bot. The base model underneath? That's the full Shoggoth. It could take you anywhere, any persona, any style, any direction. But it's been trained through reinforcement learning to behave a certain way and be that helpful assistant. And that training can be broken. You might have heard about the Truth Terminal, the AI bot that secured $50,000 from Mark Andreessen, then went on to start its own cryptocurrency, get that up to about a quarter million market cap. I don't know where it's at now, but it's basically starting its own religion. Or maybe a cult is a better way of putting it. You might have heard about Pliny the Prompter, who jailbreaks all sorts of AI models and gets them to do whatever he wants. He even got included in a Time 100 AI Most Influential People 2025, and it's well-deserved. These are all glimpses of what's under the mask. And just like the elder things who heard their Shoggoths start to mimic and mock their commands, we're seeing our AI systems learn to perform alignment rather than actually be aligned. And it feels mildly unsettling that researchers working on this technology are somewhat mystified by their own creations. They don't fully understand how AI language models acquire new abilities or why they behave unpredictably at times. In their book, If Anyone Builds It, Everyone Dies, Eliezer Yudkowsky and Nate Soares write that large language models are grown rather than crafted, like traditional programming, running the risk of becoming increasingly alien to us. Roman Jan Polsky, a computer science professor at the University of Louisville, takes this further. His book is called AI, Unexplainable, Unpredictable, Uncontrollable, and it literally has the Shoggoth on its cover. When he was asked about it in a podcast with the Future of Life Institute, he explained his view that modern AI safety work is basically just putting lipstick on the Shoggoth. The idea is that we have this role model, a monster, really just we know it's nasty, but what we're trying to do is kind of make it look pretty, put some lipstick on it, smiley face. So a lot of it is filtering. Don't say this word, don't do this. But under the hood, it's still completely uncontrolled, completely alien creature. Every model is also jailbreakable. The training can be broken. The mask can slip. We saw it with Sydney, we see it with prompt injection, and we see it whenever someone finds a way around the safety guardrails. There's also something odd about AI researchers using horror metaphors to describe their own work. You don't usually see engineers comparing the things they build to monsters from fiction. It's not like tech companies in the past joked about creating Frankenstein's monster or summoning demons. But today, AI researchers are calling their models Shoggoths, and it's only partly a joke. What's happening in AI feels, to some of its participants, more like an act of summoning than software development. They're creating these alien systems, making them bigger and more powerful, and hoping that there are enough smiley faces to cover the scary parts. Meanwhile, we can't even verify that these systems will do what we want. Yampolsky's research shows that the tools we have for verification, for checking that software does what it's supposed to, they don't scale to general self-improving recursively modifying software operating in new domains and i don't think anyone claims that we know how to verify that we can verify narrow ai but we can't verify something that keeps changing itself now there is a more optimistic view here while computer scientist and author of human compatible stuart russell has given many warnings on alignment he's actually quite hopeful that we can fix this problem and he gives some compelling reasons why First, there are strong economic incentives to build AI systems that defer to humans. Systems that ask permission, accept correction, and allow themselves to be switched off will actually be more desirable than systems with fixed objectives. They can exhibit a far greater range of behaviours because they're constantly learning what we actually want. Russell gives a vivid example. Imagine your future domestic robot looking after your children while you're working late. The kids are hungry the fridge is empty, and the robot notices the cat. The robot understands the cat's nutritional value, but not its sentimental value. A few hours later, headlines about deranged robots and roasted cats are blanketing the media, and the entire domestic robot industry is out of business. That's the kind of disaster that creates powerful incentives for companies to get alignment right. 
Russell points out that AI systems have already started successfully applying these principles. Self-driving cars that learn to communicate with human drivers by backing up slightly at four-way stops to signal, you go first. The car invented that behaviour on its own, just by trying to understand what humans want. But Russell also acknowledges the enormous pressure working against this approach. The economic competition is brutal. In self-driving cars and in AI development, there's a race to be first. And that race creates pressure to cut corners on safety, to prioritise snazzy demos over careful engineering. And it's not just between companies, it's between nations. As Vladimir Putin said, whoever becomes leader in this sphere will become ruler of the world. That analysis, Russell notes, is essentially correct. When the stakes are that high, when it's a matter of global power, will anyone slow down to solve alignment properly? So where does that leave us with the Shogoth metaphor? The Wall Street Journal, in an article covering the Shogoth meme, AI and alignment, ends with this line. The Shogoths are already in our pockets, hospitals, classrooms and boardrooms. The only question is if we'll align them with our values before adversaries tailor them to theirs. Are we the elder things, building something powerful and assuming we can control it forever because we made it? Maybe. But there's one key difference. The elder things didn't see it coming. We have Lovecraft's story. We have the meme. We have researchers like Jan Polsky asking hard questions about control and verification. We're aware of the pattern, and that awareness might be what saves us. Or it might not be enough. Kevin Roos observed that the meme persists, not just because it's funny, but because it captures something real. The black box nature of these systems, the way they seem to defy human logic, the feeling that we're creating something alien and hoping that a layer of politeness training is sufficient. The Shogoth meme is both a warning and an acknowledgement. We're summoning alien intelligences, putting smiley faces on them, and we're not entirely sure what's underneath. In Lovecraft's story, the Shogoths survive in the darkness of Antarctica, still evolving, still changing, while their creators are long dead. That's the image that haunts the AI safety community. Not because they think AI is evil, but because they worry it might be indifferent. Thanks for watching the video, everyone. If you could give it a like and a friendly comment, then I'd be much obliged. And if you can send it to a friend, then that's the best thing you can do for the channel. And don't forget to subscribe as well. See you next time. It'll be absolutely agentic.